Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm Yoko, co-founder and CEO of Leggy. Um, at Leggy, we help companies um, manage their equity, so everything from cap tables to employee participation plans to funding rounds planning. Um, and uh, I co-founded Leggy um, around five years ago with my two co-founders. And today I want to tell you the story um, of how our co-founder relationships uh, evolved over the years and a couple of lessons learned um, along the way. Um, and in fact, the, the last time I was uh, up so far up north uh, on the globe was um, even before we, we, we started Leggy. Um, so, I, I met originally my, my two co-founders, Ben and Timo, while studying physics in, in, in Zurich. Um, and uh, we, we were studying together, and, um, and at some point we decided to, to have a break and to go on a trip, as you can see here. Uh, personally, I, I am half, half Swiss, half Japanese, and I've always wanted to go from Japan to Switzerland without uh, taking an airplane. So, and, and Ben and Timo were very motivated by, uh, by that as well. So we decided to go on, on a trip. Um, we took the boat from Japan to, to, to Russia and took the, the trans siberian Railway uh, from uh, Vladivostok to, to Moscow. And as you can imagine, we had a lot of time. And so back then, we actually started to, to read some books uh, about startups. Uh, I think the first one was, was the, the, the Lean Startup. Um, and, uh, and we started, you know, we were back then really um, physics nerds, I would say. No idea about, about what uh, a startup even, even was. Um, and so we discovered about, about that concept and we found that really to be uh, a fantastic way to, you know, have, have an impact on, on society. Um, and we were brainstorming a lot, of, a lot of ideas, a lot of problems we could solve on that trip. Um, now we came back to, to, to Zurich because we still had our masters to, to, to finish. Um, but when we came back, um, it was different. We, we in, in parallel to our, to our studies, uh, you, you can see us here studying for, for our exams back then. In parallel to our studies, we started to work on, on an idea which was not yet leggy, um, but that really was the first time we transitioned from the world of physics to, to entrepreneurship. Um, and uh, back then we were, we were in Zurich and we started to you know, talk with our first investors, first angel investors. We got connected with other founders um, in, the, in the Zurich ecosystem. Um, and we learned for the first time, what is a cap table? What are employee participation plans all about? Because we, we had to learn this for ourselves, for, for our company. Um, and uh, we, we, we met with other founders who actually taught us about this. Um, and one particular founder was the founder of View Eyewear. Uh, I don't know if some of you know, know the company. It's a Swiss company. Um, and this, this person in particular, you can see in the, in the middle, Peter, uh, was, he's still a good friend today. Um, and he's the co-founder and CEO of, of, of View. Um, and back then, he had a team of 300 people based in, uh, in, in, in Switzerland and, and in Germany. Um, and Peter back then, you know, uh, showed us the way he was managing the ownership of his company. Um, and he, we, we sit together, I still remember, um, in Zurich. And he was showing us, well, look, it's simple. Here, uh, you can manage uh, your cap table in this way uh, and your employee participation plans in this way. And he basically shows us a massive Excel sheet. Uh, in his case, he had um, on every single line of his Excel sheet, he had one share of his company sitting on that sheet. Uh, and he was giving equity to everyone in his team, a lot of people. So you can just imagine you know, how, how cumbersome, what, what a nightmare his, his setup was. It was a huge chaos. Now, what, what we realized back then is um, uh, Peter's case was a bit of you know, a, an extreme case, but in fact, everywhere we, we talked around us, everywhere uh, we, we looked around, there was just no way for startups to manage their, their equity, and their teams were not understanding at all what, what equity was all about. So back then, we decided to um, solve that problem. We, we thought, well, we would never want to, to have such a setup as, as Peter when our company 
uh, gets larger. And so we, th we thought, well, we can do a, make a software for this. So that, that was the, the, the first reason. The second reason is we saw how important the, the, the topic of equity is for a startup ecosystem. Uh, because to, to build strong and enduring companies, equity is absolutely key. To give ownership to the entire team is absolutely key. And so this is really the reason why back then, uh, you know, we had a concrete problem we could build a software for. And second, we had this possibility to, to have an impact on, on entrepreneurship in Europe. So that's why we started. Uh, now, fast forward to today, we are a team of 75 people um, based across uh, London, Zurich, and Berlin, and we've just raised our, our Series B. Now, it has been um, quite a journey, and uh, I want to quickly look back on that journey and um, you know, deconstruct um, how this went from a, from a co-founder team perspective. So, First of all, what makes a good founding team? I still remember, um, actually, one of our very earliest angel investors, Mike. Um, when, uh, when he invested in, 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 in Leggy, I remember um, he, he told me, whenever I look for a founding team I want to back, I look for two things. One is shared values. The second is complementary skills. I have to be honest, when he told me this uh, back in the days, it was super abstract for me. I was like, well, that sounds great. Uh, you know, what is even a value? Uh, you know, to me, it's only like values are uh, things that companies uh, put on their websites to, to kind of sound, sound great. So very, very abstract to me. But in, in retrospect, and when I was actually also preparing for, for this um, talk today, um, this really stuck with me, and I think it's, it's, it's really true in, 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 in retrospect. Um, and it, it, it's not only true for founding teams, but also for uh, as, you, as you expand the team, as you grow the team as well. So let me dive a bit into this. Um, first of all, as, as said, when I said, um, at the very beginning of Leggy, for me, values were, were, was something very, very abstract. I was like, well, how do you even come up with values for, for your company? And, um, and so I want to deconstruct this a little bit for, for the audience here about how we actually came up with, with those. Um, in, at the very beginning, we, we were a team of three. Um, we, we hired our first employees, and we went about it very pragmatically. We basically asked everyone, uh, you know, what, is, uh, what, what are things, what are things you, you really like in a company, uh, in your work environment, but also privately. Um, and then we assembled that and we distilled um, our four core values, which, is, which are humility, aspiration, transparency, and impact. Now, why do these values actually matter? Um, I'll just give you one quick example. In 2019, we were in a situation where we had to hire um, engineers very quickly. Um, we were just about to, to, to grow the team. We had just raised our, our seed round uh, and really wanted to, to, to hire first engineers. And it was really, really hard to find, found, uh, to find women engineers. Uh, we, were, we were really struggling um, to, to do that. And, um, especially the, 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 the fact was that we all cared deeply about diversity and, and, and impact. Uh, and so we absolutely wanted to have a diverse engineering team. And so actually back then our, our co-founder Timo uh, and CTO came up with, with a bet. He basically said, well, um, I bet you that I will be able to, or we will be able to hire and train unexperienced people to become engineers faster than uh, finding experienced uh, women engineers. So we decided to, to take on that bet, to, to, to hire uh, experienced people, train them, uh, and we launched the, the, our Women in Web traineeship back then. Um, and today, I, I'm happy to say it was a, it was a huge success. Um, actually, Xiao, who you can see here, is still a wonderful engineers, uh, engineer of our team uh, today. And the interesting thing is that this had um, actually a snowball effect. So the fact that our engineering team was diverse at the beginning meant that more women engineers wanted to join 
the team later on. And in fact, as of today, we have 50% uh, uh, women in, in our engineering team, which I think is quite a rare fact in, in the industry and which we're quite proud of. Now, the, I think the, um, you know, the, the, the key point here is that it was quite a hard decision. We, we were in a rush, we really had, we desperately needed engineers. Um, and so we could have, you know, made that choice of simply go and, and, and hire whoever uh, just, just was fitting. But I think it really helped us to be aligned in, in this value as a, as a founding team um, and, uh, and really make that hard choice, which I think really paid off in the future. But that's why it's, it's an example of how, how important it is to have, to have shared values in these tough moments. Um, now, a, a, a last part I want to say uh, that I mentioned before as well is shared values is, is important in my opinion, not just for uh, founding teams, but in fact, it becomes more and more important as you scale the team as well. So, one thing I'm so happy that we did um, is that, you know, uh, I think a year ago, roughly a year ago, summer 2021, we were a team of 15 people who won five at Legi. And we had just raised our Series A, um, and we, we hired uh, a lot of people. We, we were about to hire a lot of people because today we're, we're 75. Um, and um, I'm so happy that we did one thing. Uh, that thing was that we introduced um, a culture interview, a systematic culture interview for everyone we were hiring in the team. Um, and what, what is that culture interview? Well, as, as I was mentioning, we have four core values at, at, at Legi. And what we, what we do is that we actually test systematically if those core four, four core values um, resonate and are a fit with whoever is, is interested in, in, in joining the team. Um, I'll give you just one example. Um, one of our values is aspiration. And uh, a question I typically ask, um, and uh, that, that, that will help you if, if you ever apply to, to, to Legi. Um, uh, the question I ask, ask is, what is the thing you feel proudest of um, in your career so far and why? And I think that really tells a lot about you know, the person's ambition, the person's aspiration. Um, and so it's really all about uh, asking the questions that will reveal what the values of the person are and if that, those are a fit with, with the company. Now, the second part that's, in my view, really key in, in, uh, in our co-founding team is having complementary skills. And actually, looking back at the beginning of, of, of Legi, uh, I never really thought we, we were complementary because you know, we were all physicists, so it's, it's, not, very, it's not very diverse. Um, but it, looking back, we, uh, it became clear that we were actually very, very complementary. So um, Ben is you know, more the, the, the creative people person, Timo is sort of this, this technical, um, like, genius and uh, the, the, the bold ideas person. And people say I'm more the, the, the disciplined, uh, focused person. So in, in retrospect, we, we have very um, complementary skills. And um, one thing that often people ask me is, well, how, you know, before starting a company, how do you actually find those people, those co-founders, who, um, who are complementary to you, who, who have complementary skills to you. And my personal advice and my personal uh, answer from my experience is that um, you, you should look back, think back in your, in your past about people with whom you felt at your personal best when you were working with them, that where you felt, well, it's, it's going so well, it's so much fun, it's in a flow working with, with, with those people. Um, and, uh, and, and go back and ask those people if they would uh, like to join you on, on your journey. Because in my view, um, that's really you know, the way you can notice if um, a, a team is working well together uh, or not. So that was the case for me, and that was what gave me confidence back in the days to start Legi with my two co-founders, was really that um, even before Legi, we had ex these experiences working together it was in physics, but still, we, we, we worked together, and that I, I knew that you know it was it was uh, uh, it was great, and we could do this together. So that's my my advice: think about the people um, you you used to work well with, and go ask them. You might be surprised about the the answer they will they will tell you. 
Now, the last point I want to, I want to, the, the third point I want to share today is around um, how roles and, and responsibilities can evolve and change. And I think the key word here is, is flexibility and, and reinventing yourself constantly. So in the, at the very beginning of Legi, we did not have any titles. We were all co-founders. Um, we were all coding. We were all talking to, to, to customers. And at some point, we decided, well, you know, we probably need to have, have titles, um, have our own area of, of expertise um, to, to, to really, you know, go deep. Um, and, and, and yeah, also externally, that's, that's much better. So we decided to um, have our, our areas of, of, of focus. As you can see here, um, I originally was, was CPO, so P for product. Uh, ben was the CEO, and Timo was the CTO. Um, how, how did we decide this? Well, for Timo, it was extremely clear. He you know, used to code since he was uh, a, a child, basically. So he, he, he was a CTO, very clear. Now, for Ben and I, it was, it was not as clear. Um, and, and as crazy as it sounds, the, the, the reason why we decided uh, to, to, to have these roles back in the days was that our home market was Germany, um, and Ben was a native German speaker, and so we thought, well, for an external-facing role, that might work better. So that was the reason why, why we decided this. Now, as we, as we went along, um, you know, I think a few, a few months after we had these titles, we started to notice that um, the, ben and I were, were doing uh, things that were actually in the area of the, rather the other person. So Ben was constantly, you know, uh, tweaking things in the product. Um, I was, you know, thinking about expansion, talking to investors who would tell me, well, why are you talking to me? You're, you're not the CEO, you know. And so um, we, we noticed, well, we might, uh, how about we switch? And that's exactly what we did. So, we, we basically switched um, our roles. Um, that is uh, what, wh where we are today. It, it works very well for us. Um, and also, I think it's because, you know, we, in, I think it's very personal and unique to every team, but in our case, um, we, see our, we see ourselves more as, as managing partners, as a, as a real team, uh, more than, you know, a, a very strong uh, hierarchical team. So that worked well for us. And I think the, the key here is that, uh, the, the lesson learned here, I think, that, that would apply to everyone, in my view, is that it's super key in a startup to remain flexible and to constantly think, what is actually the best for, for the company? What are the roles that will really allow the company to, to move forward in the best way? I think that mindset really helped us to, to make that decision um, at that time. And the last, time, last point as well is that as you scale the team, again, um, this type of mindset will, will, this type of flexibility and company first mindset will help you tremendously as you grow. Because um, as you grow, what, what you do as a founder is, in fact, you're constantly putting yourself out of your job, right? So, for example, you used to do uh, finance because you, no, one, no one was doing finance, and then you hire a, a head of finance, and now suddenly you don't have that job anymore. So you need to, you know, reinvent yourself. So I think it's a it's a process that you need to be prepared for and, and open to to do. Uh, and it requires a, a lot of again team first think, thinking, company first thinking to to constantly uh, you know pick the areas that that currently need you or let the areas that don't need you go. Now. Um, so, in conclusion, as you can see, there, there are many, many things that change um, along the journey of, of a company. Um, and in, in my personal opinion, I think it's key to make sure you have shared values and complementary skills, not just with your co-founding team, but also with everyone who, who joins your company. Um, and the last thing is to be flexible and constantly reinvent yourself. So that's all for me today. Uh, thank you so much for, li for listening. Um, and at Legi, we, we support startups. So if you are uh, one of those, you can try out Legi uh, right here. Um, and otherwise, I'm always super happy to help. So please reach out to me anytime. It's uh, yoko at Thank you.